You just got a card. Yeah. 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 Folks, we're ready to begin. Oh, we're going to start. We're going to start. Thank you. Hit it. Time. Let's go. This meeting is hereby called to order of the South River Mayor and Borough Council meeting number 14 held today on September the 12th, 2023. May I have the statement of notice of publication, Madam Clerk? In compliance with Chapter 231 of Public Law of 1975, notice of this special meeting to be held at the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, has been published in the Home News Tribune on August 18th, 2023, posted on the Municipal Building Bulletin Board, the Borough website, and the front door of the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River. Thank you. Roll call. Mayor Krenzel? Here. Councilwoman Ballas? Here. Councilman Gindy? Here. Councilman Kurchensky? Here. Councilwoman Mira? Here. Councilman Oliveira? He will be absent tonight. Council President Siula? Here. Please stand for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. No proclamations, honor, awards, presentations, nothing for the agenda session. There will be a closed session at the end of the meeting. Because we have guest speakers tonight, we will run through our professional departmental reports, hold off the governing body comments, have our guests speak, and then we'll go right into the public comments if the public has any comments uh, to make uh, or say anything about the um, the report or anything else that's on their minds. Uh, so we'll begin immediately with the reports. Good evening, Mr. Koch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very quick update. The uh, 2022 project, the road program, we're closing <coughs> that out. The 2023, we're in project design. The uh, 2023 local aid and the 2024 local aid programs, the applications are submitted. We're waiting to hear from the DOT. The substation, I have the bid documents done, just have a few touch-ups to do to it, then we'll pick a bid date for that. And the stormwater assistance grant, as you know, you got the 25,000, and we have survey crews out in the borough. Right now, they're in the southern end of the town, so if anybody sees somebody out surveying, they're locating the inlet heads by GPS. Thank you. Any questions or comments to Mr. Koch? Thank you, sir. Mr. Zanga? Nothing to report. Okay. okay. Mr. Yes, Mayor. On uh, October 10th, we're going to start handing out the leaf bags. Each household gets 20 free leaf bags for the year. And uh, you could present the uh, coupon that's in the calendar, a driver's license, or a utility bill. You could pick them up Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 12 at the DPW. And we will also be doing on Saturdays, but maybe a couple weeks into the, the handouts. Thank you. That's all I have. Chief? Mayor, I don't have anything. Okay. Anything from the clerk? We're getting ready for uh, receive the mail and ballots, right? Um, be coming out? I got, the the Board of Election didn't let us know when they were going to send them out because normally they'll let us know and then I open up the, the kiosk outside. Um, when they let me know, then I'll open them up so that they can drop did them Did you off. get a mail-in ballot or did you get the <coughs> statement saying this is the uh, ballot? application? I got mine today. The actual mail-in ballot. Not not the announcement that these, this, these are the people on the ballot, this is where you oh, vote? No. No. The application if yeah. I want one. Oh, if you want yeah. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. They came today. Okay. I didn't get any mail today. I guess I don't read. Yes. <laughs> Anything? I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Are there? Yeah, Mayor, the only thing I have, I left all the members a letter from the residents uh, surrounding 10 Spring Street. Uh, they're having a problem with uh, one of their neighbor's property. Code enforcement's been working on it for a couple of weeks. We've been having difficulty reaching the people that are in charge of the estate. Uh, so we got the, all the mail returned and all that. So as of tomorrow, uh, DPW is going to go in and clean it up. Okay, very good. Sir. And that's just so that you know that we did receive the uh, petition. All right, then. Then if we could have our guest speakers come forward. The microphone is yours. 
This is going to be a report on the water. If you could introduce yourself and your company. My name is Mike Fury. Come on, sit down. Um, from Agri Environmental and Laboratory Services, uh, we're uh, responsible for the testing and operation of the facility. So, um, so you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, it's Billy Davis. Thank you, Mayor, Council members, mm -hmm. uh, for, for time for that. Thank you. So. We were asked to do, uh, you know, we're an update on the water system. Like I said the last time we were here, um, we're, we're, it's, this is a. I cannot, if you have me speaking so much, because we think I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Give them the uh, wireless. Thank you. So from the last time we were, we were, we were here, we we're, we're looking to do like a two-prong approach to addressing all the, the, the water system problems. Um, the, the first part of it is the, we're, we're focused on the treatment plant, and um, Felipe will give an update on the temporary permit process. We're, we're looking to ch change some chemical treatment processes within the treatment plant, and we're going to be submitting a, a temporary permit to the DEP shortly. And, he'll, and Felipe will explain the, the details of that. The other uh, um, part of the approach is looking at the distribution system. Uh, uh, you, you hired uh, Kleinfelder to do a hydraulic model, and that hydraulic model was done and identified and looked at the different parts of the distribution system, and then came up with a, a plan on how to, how to deal with some of the issues that you've seen out in the distribution system. And now what I'll do is I'll just turn it over to Felipe, and he'll explain. We'll, we'll go over the... The hydraulic model first. I think that's that's probably the better one to start with. Well, it's, thank you, Mike. So um, last this year we were um, requested to do an evaluation of some uh, water quality issues that were experiencing in the in the borough, mainly color. Uh, we uh, were trying to understand what was happening. And, uh, part of the process was to use the hydraulic model that will give us a better understanding of. What things are, what is happening in the system in terms of velocities, flows, and so on. We had the issues uh, with color after the fire uh, that was April of this year. Um, it didn't happen during the fire; it happened a little bit after the fire. But with the hydraulic model, I'm going to try to show you what we could gather from that. So, in that graph there, you have a recorder <coughs> in front of you with uh, the information that I'm talking about. So, I'm sorry. So in this graph, uh, we can identify the system. And we have a very diverse system. We have a long section of 20 inch pipe that runs from the plant uh, north. And then we have very small pipes for 60% of the system, four inches. And we have another component of six inch lines, which are not ideal for any uh, distribution system at, uh, at this point in time. Uh, so in this graph, and you will see it better in the paper, in the, in the document, the report I submitted tonight, we're showing the change of velocity in the pipe during a fire event. So you open a hydrant flu full blast, and you see what's happening in the system. There is no other consumption. There was at 2 in the morning. There is no real consumption from residents or industry or anything like that. So all the water is going there. You have a change in velocity in the pipes, and you also have a change in direction of the flow, which is the tricky part here. Because we have a pipe that is used to going in one direction, and then it's getting water in the other direction. It detaches the biofilm that is present in the pipes. When you have a single point of exit, not much of a problem. We experience in with Daniel and with Mike Smith, when we were doing the hydraulic model, we went to the, to the hydrants, we opened them for a certain period of time, we experienced color, you wait in until the color is gone, and then that's it, right? We never were opening at a flow that we experienced during this event. What happens after that? Water sits there, right? You close the hydrant, you stop the fire, the water sits there, and then what happened was, Two weeks after that, we had a problem with the altitude valve. And all the particles that were detached in that event are just sitting in the pipes. And then you open in another direction, and what is going to happen? Everything flushes all over the system. Then you got the spikes in color. 
that explanation very succinctly. I'm not going into specific details, but you see the difference. In some pipes here, we have uh, velocities that are 20 times the average velocities of the pipe. Significant. And you're going to see that more in small diameter pipes, where you have the same flow, smaller diameter, higher velocity, velocity square for everything that we do there. So that is that approach. And here, uh, I'm trying to represent here the diameter of the pipes. So anything reddish orange, small diameter pipes, four inch and six inch. Probably, I would say here, I have the exact numbers, but in, in this drawing, probably 75, 60 to 75 percent of the system is small diameter. Um, very old pipes, full of corrosion, tuberculation, and many other things that we don't uh, expect to see in a system of this nature. In blue, and uh, the other side, this kind of purple line there, very large diameter pipes, kind of consistent with the trunk mains in the system. So in that memorandum, I'm, I'm setting a path forward on how we think we can prevent uh, issues in the future. Uh, the first thing that we need to think about is to replace all the water main in the town, right? It's expensive, really expensive. If we're going to replace 60% of the pipe in the system, it's going to cost a fortune and we need to, well, we don't, you guys need to approach it in a phased approach. Uh, what other recommendation that we have there is we need to better establish a path for the water in the system that will alleviate some of the uh, issues that we have with the small diameter piping. The location of the tank, <coughs> uh, even though a main trunk was created to bring the water from the plant all the way around to the tank, it's in a dead end. It doesn't loop around, so it only has one source to go in and go out. So part of the recommendation in the interim, while you change, I think it's 100 and... One hundred and seventy-six thousand linear feet of pipe uh, of six inch and four inch. Then we need to think about looping some of these locations <coughs> to alleviate the changes in direction of the flow in any event. Can you identify three? Three, three locations. So one is the uh, crossing here. We need to do something to connect the tank and loop it to this larger pipe here in the system, is creating a double entrance for the tank. Then we have a break in this area here of small diameter pipes. I don't know what exactly is here. It looks like an environmental sensitive area, some parks or something. Something is to happen there. And the other thing that is very important for, for the town is this line. Um, one of the interconnect from East Brunswick is here. And all this line is eight, six, I'm sorry, six inch line. So during the fire, if I may, if I can explain, could you hold it there for a second? Thank you. So in the, during the fire, 2 a.m. in the morning, the tank is almost about to be full. We open the fire hydrant right along this area. And all the water is mainly coming from the plant, right? The pumps, the booster pumps never shut down. And all the water is trying to find that way. The tank has only one path of water to come to the fire. It doesn't have anything else. So it's drawing water from the plant, but there is no real way to move the water from here to there. This is kind of a restriction due to the size of the pipe. Uh, so we have identified three of them. I didn't put them in the memo. I can uh, change it and put the exact locations in, in, the, in the memo. I, I show you two. And then the third one, it's right around here. 
This is the other interconnect with uh, East, Brunswick. East Brunswick, and there is nothing here. So all the water is connected here. Yes, it's a large diameter pipe. I think that is 12, 12 inch diameter, but there is nothing coming to the north here, uh, to the sorry, to the west here. So this area of small diameter pipes is not fed from this side. Um, three kind of quick, I don't know how expensive, we have not looked into cost, locations, roads, parks, environmental issues or anything like that, but from the hydraulic model you can do anything and say, okay, what, what does this pipe connected to here uh, can do? Now, the other thing that is going to help in the meantime is to do the unidirectional flushing of the hydrants. We experience a lot of issues when we flush the hydrants. It happens every year. You have to hydrant and then you open it a little bit, leave it open until it clears and the whole thing. So we need to establish a procedure to do that. Open the hydrant, close this valve, let all the water go out, close, move and move and move. It takes time. It's not just open the hydrants, there is more into it, but that will prevent the color in the water and it also helps cleaning the pipes. So three things, new pipes, bypass, uh, looping, and unidirectional fl uh, flushing. Yeah. So unidirectional flushing, intentional flushing is just flushing the system, open up hydrants. Thank you. No, there's no special plan, you just go out, open up the hydrants, and do a flush. And yeah. yeah. so unidirectional flushing, you have to put a plan together mm -hmm. and you have to valve off certain areas and you have to move water faster in, 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 a, in a certain direction. So what you're doing, you're, by unidirectional flushing, you're increasing the velocity through the pipes, which is not normal in normal flushing, and then you, you do a better, better cleaning of the insides of the pipe. So a unidirectional flushing will require a plan in order to do it, and then it, it, it's pretty involved with staff in order to carry it out. It's not your, your conventional flushing program, which you do twice a year. It's it's more it's more detailed. So it, it, it would cost more money to plan it and do it correctly. But it's it's a um, it's something you can do to, to take care of your problem. You know, before, you know, in addition to looking into the looping of the system and then the long term replacing the pipes. So, because the ins what it does is if you increase the velocity through the pipes, you do a better job of cleaning the interior. This, this, the tuberculation on these pipes is many years in the making, and it just builds up over time, and it's very difficult to, to, re to remove that tuberculation. So, the other option is, is a cleaning and lining program. And you know that's something I don't know. Can you speak to a cleaning and lining program? Uh, I it's can. An option or not? I can speak to a cleaning and lining program on any pipe that is eight inches or larger. For four and six, I don't know a manufacturer that will do it. Uh, I just replaced uh, eleven thousand linear feet of. I'm sorry. I lined nine thousand linear feet of uh, pipe between six inches at eight inches in uh, Lakewood, New Jersey. Uh, six inches was terrible. It was really difficult. There is no force that can pull the liner and then you pull too hard and you create these ripples in the lining so it was not ideal. Eight inch was fine but it is expensive. It's smaller than that I don't know anybody that will do it and I was dealing with Senexon uh, which is a Canadian company that does it all the time and the contractor um, in here was local guy, uh, reputable, it was, they tried, and it's just very difficult to do it in small diameter pipe. I don't think they do four inch. They could try six inches, but as soon as you get a bend, it's just impossible. Plus, uh, in, a in, in the nature of these small short runs, you're going to make a thousand pits, because you need to get to the beginning at the end of the pipe, which you would have to do for any diameter, but with this four inch, all this for just that is not is not feasible, in my opinion. So any, any questions about that this hydraulic model? I know you have a copy of the report. You can read it and digest it and understand it. Chris, um, where was the location? Pull your map back up or one of your shows, please. 
Where was the location of the fire? Okay, so is that off of William Street? Thomas. Thomas. Thomas? That was Thomas Street 1. Okay. Between Main and Prospect. Yeah. Is the PRV at the intersection <coughs> of North End Drive and William Street working? The top. At the top. At the intersection of William Street and... Where the fire was? No, yeah. but there is a 12-inch line that runs all the way down, turns the corner, and comes all the way out to Main Street. This line has a PRV right here. Yeah, that's the entrance for the East Brunswick. That, is that to, to control the flow, to pressures from East Brunswick? It is not to control it, it's to regulate. To regulate the, the we, pressure between the two systems. But it's meant to open when the pressure drops. It did, it did, but it was not sufficient. 12 inch line? Correct, so we have configured the model to allow the entrance of water. It's in the model, it's unlimited. You're sure the PRV is Well, working? you're asking for the service. Pardon me? Are you asking if, if, if the PRV has ever been serviced? I'm asking if it's working. Well, it has, if, if it's, you have to actually look at the PRV and determine I know, and, I'm, and that's what I'm asking. Do you know uh, if it's working? It. Because that's critical to getting the flow into the whole north end. The, the, yeah. the problem was not the flow, Bruce. They, they got all the water that they needed. But it would they recorded about. But it'll reduce the velocities pulled from the smaller lines because you're feeding it through the 12. It, it wasn't, if it's not yeah, but it, correctly, so then it won't open. Right. Then well, it won't I mean, open. I, I think it's a good idea to service it. It should be serviced. So I think, number one, you should check on that. Um, Gates what? Avenue, which is a paper street, has an eight inch line in it in the north end in the area where you were pointing. That connects from down at the bottom all the way up to the old bridge turnpike. Here to help or here? You. Can't tell from this distance, but it goes from Brick Plant Road. Actually, Public Works does that years ago. No, the whole pipe all the way up to the OVT in the old in the paper right of way of Gate Seven. So that should be delivering water up to the north end if it's not, you know, you know to the upper end. So I don't know if there's a closed valve or something where that's not working, but if it, if that's the case, you should check on that as well. I do. I do agree with that. To, to, to service the pressure reducing valve is a good idea. Yeah, and but also you were saying there's a need for a loop, but I think there I, is. Well, a loop. we we need to check if that's. This is the model that I got from. Yeah, I'm just explaining that there's a pipe yeah. there that Public Works built. So. It goes back probably 30 or more years ago, but it's a plastic pipe. So it's not showing that. It's not. I'm not it's sure not in, it's not in here. I don't know where exactly it falls, but I don't. If it's connecting this 12 inch to this eight, it, I don't have it. Okay, well, there is a pipe coming up there, so it's something to look into to see if it's open. Maybe there's a closed valve or something. The East Brunswick connection runs directly to the standpipe. There is, it's on a six inch. There no, is. it's not. It's a separate line from New Street that runs independently and goes directly to the tank. I'll double check that, Bruce, but I don't see it. I'm sure of it. We'll have it in the model. One, I believe it was put in in the last 20 years. I believe it was put in when we modified the agreement with East Brunswick to bring water into the tank that way. It, believe it or not, the increase of flow for the day of the fire from that connection was not substantial. <clears throat> like the daily that we get for that night for didn't, didn't indicate a lot <laughs> of extra or anything different between the previous day and or the days after. So the volumes were the same? Similar, a little higher, but not but I thought there were 400,000 gallons dumped on the fire. Yeah. See, that's what I'm worried about. The plant about. was on. Why wasn't it? it well, that's why I'm questioning why is the PRV wasn't that open and pushing water this way? And you said the tank was serving, but the tank should have been filling the at tank, the same time. The tank kept constant. It was about to be turned off, kept constant, and then 
at 4.15 when the fire was out and the fire hydrant was closed, it jumped up. Okay, so it was keep, so it was keeping inter- pressure. Is that interconnection still, are you taking water from East Brunswick right now? Now, yes. yes, it's very low at the <coughs> north end. We have a we North have End was designed down. to be a couple PSI higher than the static so that she yes. doesn't work all the time, but just works Correct. enough to keep right. active. So it's like six times what you take here versus what you take here. You're always also looking at the uh, altitude valve at the tank. That's going to be serious. Mm-hmm. And then you were talking about cleaning and lining. So you were saying somebody was pulling something through? The lining, yeah. They cleaned the pipe. Mm-hmm. And then they tried to line six inch. <coughs> we had to do open cut after the liner failed because it was all rippled. So it was a pull through liner. Correct. Have you done cement lining? I've done cement lining. I've done epoxy lining. Uh, the cement you can do four inch, though I agree with you. Don't do four inch if we bump that up to a normal pipe. But six is routinely cleaned and lined with cement, and you blow back the services to get the divot off the cork. And I would agree with you. The pipe was newer than that, Bruce, but it's just too old to try to restore a pipe of that of that nature. Have you take? We should gather sections because I've done whole towns. We can, of it, you can do couponing, find out the condition, see if it's worth pegging it because the cleaning is going to be the problem, not the lining itself. Yeah, you, know, you can scrape a six. There's no problem Correct. scraping a six. What is the condition of the pipe? So you will have to understand what. Yeah, and that's what you find out when you cut it to do the new valves. Correct. You usually so you decoup on and see what the condition is. If it's structural, not structural, is it worth cleaning versus re, uh, new pipe, pretty much. I have a quick question for you, Bruce. If yeah. you, you say you've done the cement lining, and a six inch, if you go to re- if you go to clean and cement it, what's the diameter going to end up with? So the lining is about an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Tiny. The net lining is roughly an eighth of an inch. So it's very minimal. When you clean and line, you're actually taking a scraper through. It's a very aggressive thing that has prongs on it. So the internal diameter of a six inch now could be four inch, it could be three inch, depending upon how bad the tuberculation is. So what you're doing then is you're scraping all of that off to a clean pipe service surface. And then when you put that eighth inch layer on, it can't tuberculate anymore because the cast iron metal now has this thin barrier between it and the water and nothing sticks to it. So you've actually restored the internal diameter to probably 90% of what it was originally, but you might have increased it by 200% over what it flows now. And the tuberculation really obstructs the flow because you don't get consistent flow. It's constant turbulence for it. So it ends up being (coughs) if the cleaning doesn't ruin the pipe or break it, that's when you can repair it with cement lining. But if it gets broken in the process of cleaning, that's when you have to replace it. I've never really had one be broken. Uh, that's, that's, that is the risk to take. You know, you're, uh, you're it's, cleaning inside I, of the pipe that's heavily diverticulated is a possibility. I've done thousands of feet. and You know, sometimes you may find a bad casting. You might find the OD is offset on the ED, ID. You got a thin wall here and a real thick one there. And if that's the case, then you replace it. But many times those pipes have pretty thick walls to them, the old cast iron pipes. The problem is they're brittle and they'll still break over time. You replace it with cement line ductile iron pipe, your chances of breaks are very, very low. But you're spending a whole lot more money to do the replacement as opposed to rehabilitating. Pipes are 0.5 or 0.25? Pardon me? The pipes usually the dia- the uh, thickness is 0.25 or 0.5. The pipe wall diameter? Yeah. It varies per diameter of the pipe. Okay. Per manufacturer, per chances are probably by 0.25 in it, quarter inch. No, yeah. the cast iron is pretty thick. It is because it's brittle. Okay. Cast iron I is know. a brittle metal. It has lots of impurities in it and uh, casting problems. But during <clears> the time <throat> that they were doing it, it, was the best pipe there was. Yeah. Usually, well, the only way to now deal with the snap cutters, pipe, yeah. which is a much better grade of metal. 
I, I went through an exercise with uh, Trenton Airport uh, two years ago. Uh, we had 10 inch lines, uh, cast iron pipes. The diameter was two inches, like the effective diameter was two inches. The cost of cleaning it was the same as putting a new 10 inch. It was just too much. It was not, not feasible. I don't know what the conditions is, but we did do cop couponing, check the structural capacity of the pipe, check the conditions of the pipe, see if it's feasible and decide what is the best option. But it, all that is part of a cost evaluation process and properties that we don't know if the six inch pipes are going to, to hold or not. Four inch should be replaced. No question about it. Mr. Contreras, um, we gave you a list of people that normally complain. It's a target area in the upper. Yeah. Yes. Have we found why that one area seems to be having more of an issue than any other area in town? It was limited to two ends. If you see it here, there is nothing that connects across. And this is a point there also that kind of converges into a place where there is no flow. <clears throat> so as soon as you don't have any flow going, the, any color or any impurity is going to sit in that area until you open it and then for a four inch line, you have to keep in mind that you're trying to, uh, the flow is going to be the same, but then your connection place is going to be closer to the bottom where any sediment is going to deposit, right? So you're opening it and then you just suck it in. If it's an eight inch, it's going to be higher. You get that and then you clean the pipes with the regular flushing and so on and so forth. So is that area more prone to dead ends? <laughs> Do we have dead ends all over Art? Uh, but it is, that particular area doesn't have anywhere to go. It's just sitting there, which was also identified in the previews when we're doing the uh, calculations for age of the <coughs> water in the system. They actually did look at the hydraulic model results. They told us that on the inspection. Any, any more questions about the hydraulic model before we move on to the treatment? The other part of the uh, process is we're looking to do a lot of uh, different chemical treatment changes. And in, in order to do that, you have to apply to the DP for a temporary permit. Um, you, you got a copy of the, the temporary permit. The, uh, essentially, um, the, the, the changes that we're looking to make are, are switching from, uh, from lime, which does your pH adjustment to caustic soda or sodium hydroxide. And the other uh, is, is an addition of a blended polyphosphate that would help coat the insides of the pipes. And then the other chemical treatment uh, change that we're going to look at, we're going to reevaluate the client system. And so what uh, Felipe will just go over exactly what he did for the, for the temp, which, which we plan on submitting. So um, based on the water quality of the system, uh, we evaluated the chemicals that we're going to use, the doses, the forms are there for your use, capacity of the plant of about, uh, I think it's one million gallons per day. Uh, based on that, sizing of the equipment, we are uh, proposing the staging of the new um, caustic soda and poly in the old room in the front temporarily, and also relocating the chlorine into that same room while the replacement for the caustic is done where the lime is. Then once the chlorine upgrades are complete, we move the chlorine back into the chlorine room and leave the poly in the front of the room. Um, we're uh, fixing right now the cost estimate for the project because this was materials only. We didn't include installation in, in the process. So you have a better understanding of how much this is going to be. Um, all the chemical considerations are part of uh, what Mike has uh, instructed and evaluated and understands of the system. Uh, it should be a short process in terms of the permit with DEP uh, as part of a temporary permit, it's supposed to be quick. And then at the same time, while that is happening, then you file for the permanent permit 
to do all their upgrades in the final locations and so on. Yeah, it takes a temporary permit to, you're piloting the program. So you're not asking for a permanent, permanent permit for, for installation. You're just a temporary one, which is, with, like Felipe said, hopefully that's a, that's a shorter process and they can address it and they can respond quickly to us and say, yeah, you can, go, you can proceed with this chemical you know, treatment. And once we do that, then we then we when we do we you know we install these treatment chemicals in, in, in the treatment plant so we can this this is an extremely critical process. If you want the treatment plant to work and remove iron and manganese from the system, you have to have the right chemical treatment in order to do that. And and we are having a lot of difficulties with the Lyme system, and it's and it's it's really, to be perfectly honest, it's 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 almost at the end of its life, and it's and it's so it's so you really just can't continue to put good money, you know, you know after bad. It's just, this 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 Lyme system is, is a pretty old system, and it's very difficult to, to maintain. So by do, going to the caustic, it, it, it's a it's a more permanent solution. It's easy. Lyme is a very messy process. It's a dry chemical. You put you put it into the hopper, you know. It's just it's just not a it's not the most the easiest treatment plan, chemical to use. One one final thing to say, even if it's a temporary permit, it's supposed to be a quick project. It's not so quick in the construction. I want you to understand that because we're limited by bidding, we still need to purchase the equipment. We still need to bid the equipment. We still need to install the equipment. So it, it, it's not like it's going to happen right away. There is a time. In the process, they will review the application, they will give the go, then you have to go out for bids, approve the bids, award the bids, construct the equip the installation, then start it. And the start is something that needs to be done very carefully because you cannot switch chemicals right away. There is a time in place that you need to transition from one chemical to the other one so you don't have any uh, impacts in the in the system itself. And one of the things we've been trying to do, and maybe you can elaborate on that, uh, we've been trying to use more of our well water than the surface water from East Brunswick. Correct. We and that's where the problem that we've been having of the metallic taste lately right. is that it seems to be bringing more iron and manganese. Yeah, we tried to in, in, in put two, two wells on at the same time and increase the amount of flow to the treatment plant. Um, we did that on a temporary basis, and it, and it, it worked somewhat effectively, but we had difficulties uh, feeding uh, the proper amount of chlorine. So we The current plant size chemicals are designed for 1 million gallons, not 1.4 million gallons. Yeah. You can do that in a temporary basis, but not an extended period of time because you're imposing more pressure in the chemical feed system. So we're using more well water and, and less water from East Brunswick. The hydraulic model did show, though, that the demand in the system was being was able to be met by the production in the well if we could use more water from the ground storage tank, being more consistent, lower a little bit more, using more of that water and turning it on without using the water from um, East Brunswick. However, with the contract that you have with East Brunswick is not feasible to turn it off. It's you're still paying for that, so it's not worth imposing more pressure in the treatment plant when you still have to pay for the other water. So it doesn't uh, work. I have a quick question. The poly that you said yeah, is blended, poly, yeah, blended polyphosphate. That's supposed to stick to the walls of the yeah, distribution. It forms a thin, thin Speak film. in the microphone. It, it forms a thin film on the inside of the pipe. And it, and it, um, it, it, it protects the pipe, and it, you won't release that tuberculation from the inside of the pipe. Is that a temporary until we figure out what to do with this, or is that a permanent solution? Like, what is? It's a. It, it will help with the treatment process and protect the, the pipes, but it won't ever stop. You know, when you have these velocity changes through the treatment through the pipes, you're going to have those that tuberculation breaking off. It's it's not. You know, it doesn't form it, you know, such a film where it prevents it from happening. It, that's not going to happen. If you have these large velocity changes through pipes, you're going to have that stuff, that, that material breaking off. And it's a little bit more 
a strong chemical reaction, not physical attachment. It's a more a chemical reaction between the pipe and the poly that creates that layer that protects the pipe from interacting between the water and the uh, pipe itself. So it, there is a chemistry issue there that I don't want, I don't want to make you think it's going to be a permanent fix. Well, that's what I was trying to understand because we got the first report that you gave with the water treatment plant and all that, and today's the first time I'm seeing this one, so I just didn't know if that was your, you know, one option and then this another one, or we still need to continue with two sides. Big picture. Two you need to address the treatment plant, get the right chemical treatment, optimize the treatment plant, and then um, at the same time, you know, you know, work on plans for the distribution. Contingency. Yeah. Will these chemicals changes with lime affect the current state of the pipes now? Like, will it corrode more or? No, no the, the lime actually puts a thin film of calcium carbon on the inside of the pipe. That's what lime does. Uh, sodium hydroxide does not form any kind of film on the So it's not going to alter it. Lime does. Lime does form like a calcium carbon interior lining of the pipe that sodium hydroxide does not do that. And then my last question with, you know, after this report and seeing, you know, where the four and the six inch um, pipes are in town, um, did you guys see or have any suggestions with the valves as well like i know when people flush and you it goes hand in hand if you're going to replace the pipe you need to do valves you need to do it in your three-way valves and the whole thing that it won't go assist with the hydrant flushing you have new hydrants that all is part of what you need to do your hydrants right now are very difficult to operate <laughs> It's a combination of old and different kind of uh, meter, uh, hydrants that you have. So it's the, the proposed alternative is a combination of everything. Complete water main replacement with all the appurtenances that are required in a project of that nature. If, if all that valve exercise is a program, yeah. I mean, you should be doing a valve exercise program. Okay. And, 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 and under the Water Quality Accountability Act, the larger valves are required, but not small diameter valves. Like the forwards <coughs> are not required. I was going to say, do we have an estimate of the age precisely of the four and six inch um, water mains? 1950. Oh, yeah. You have to talk into the mic. I have not been around that long, so I can't, I can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. We have indications on the diameters, uh, and some pipes have ages. I'll have to dig a little bit deeper to find out uh, the age, but they are not new. I, I we we know that. No okay, thank it's you. A good question, but I, 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 I couldn't give you a definitive answer. I have no idea about this. How long has the town been here? Probably 60, 70 years old. Well over 100. Well over, well over 100. Over 100. I, I, I can't give you an answer. I'm not going to sit there and tell you something I don't know. Mm. I'm never going to answer a question I don't know. Are there any other questions from up here? No. Or I'm going to open it up to the public first. If there's any questions uh, concerning what you've just heard, if you have any comments or questions about it, you can come forward and ask now. Does it concern the water? Does it concern the water? Yes. Okay. I apologize for coming late. I was at another meeting. Um, when I hear the word poly for a pipe lining and that it interacts chemically with the pipe, I just would put out there that I, I, I hope somebody is going to make sure that there's no harmful chemicals in there like PFASs, these forever chemicals or something. We've got enough of that flowing through us in the water system now, and I just want to make sure that's not going to just add. They don't, they don't add. Uh, PFS. PFASs. PFASs. Yeah, PFAS is not, they're not in most pipes. Or, or anything else. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 yeah. They're, they're commonly used in water treatment systems. Mm. And they've been tested for been tested. things they've been released. they tested by NSF, National San Sanitation Foundation, and that, that's what qualifies. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyone else?
Good evening, Joe Donato. I live at 30 Daly Street, in South River. Um, I've got uh, a couple of questions. I noticed that you talk about discolored water, rusty water, yellow water. Is there any areas in South River, because I've, I've seen them on Facebook, where the uh, filter systems are clogged within a short period of time, which is very unusual, and they have a, a strong odor that's coming from the uh, water, as well as people doing their wash, putting it through the dryer, and taking it out, and it smells like it never, it's never been, uh, been washed. Tricky. My suggestion is that before we go too far, because I think you guys, you guys need some more information from the town as far as pipes go, because you don't have everything, that uh, a consideration for opening up a public meeting, asking everyone from the public, this is your last time before we start doing something here, Come and show us what you've got, what the problems you're having. Take those into consideration, too, because we're just talking about rusty water and water that's yellow. And we're not going to the extremes that I've seen on Facebook. And again, as the mayor has said, people should be on Facebook. They should be coming down here. Um, at least give them one more opportunity before we start something that is going to be taking care of a part of town that should be started somewhere else where they have a really bad problem, but they're afraid to come forward. Um, and you know the things that you, you gentlemen have been saying about the four-inch line and so on. This was this was acknowledged uh, some years ago, and there was a, I think it was a 1998 study for the town that uh, I tried to get a copy of, and no one seemed to have a copy of it. It probably would have been helpful for you guys to have to consider in what you've done so far. Other than that, that's my suggestion, so that people have one last chance to come and uh, express their uh, their uh, problems and see what, the, what can be done along with the uh, study and what we can do with the, uh, the water system. Anyone else? Hi. Uh, Lisa Byrne, 11 Bissett Place. Um, as a member of the Environmental Commission, I would actually like to ask for a copy of the report so that we can review it with the graphs and everything because this involves a lot of stuff that we are working on currently. Well, we just received it today, and apparently it's going to be amended. Uh, I think that by the next I, meeting. I have a copy of what I have today. I'm going to add the specific locations of the looping that I'm recommending, but it's in essence the same report. Well, you're also going to, I think, said that you're going to add the uh, three recommendations. Correct, for the looping. Right, for the looping. Uh, uh, the new pipes, uh, unidirectional flushing, those are the things that you're going to put into the report? Unidirectional flushing is included that here. That was already there. The unidirectional flushing was there. It wasn't, the one question I had for Felipe, sorry, it, it, is, it didn't give the exact number of areas to loop. Like you just said, to do some looping. Yes, it, it it's three, three locations. This report that you have there <coughs> has the three locations. I just didn't put them in the, in okay. the draw. At the, by our next meeting, I'd like to have that with the amended report, the things that you've talked about that are not in there, and then it'll be made public. So. Okay. All right. Anything else, Lisa? Richard? Richard Byrne, Love Set Vice. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if... Can you get that that diagram and the other one exported into a PDF file so we can, uh, you know, like zoom in and, and because uh, I have personal interest in some of the things here and and you know we can. It is in the report. It is in the report. Yeah, but I mean, like from the system you created this diagram in, and if you can export it into like a full size PDF that I can zoom in and. It is. Yeah. In, it is in a PDF. It is. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, as part of a report, it's just going to be. The oh. Of it. I mean, uh, I I can send it to Art, and you yeah. can distribute when you do it. The yeah. amended report. That's what you'll Thank have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. that's better. Separately, as individuals. No problem. Yeah, because if you put it online, then it'll be in color and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Then zoom in, as you said, because it's really hard to read that way. So. Yeah. Once you export it directly from the, yeah. whatever you created. Anyone else? So uh, one of the solutions that I guess we're suggesting is the addition of polyphosphate. Is that the correct term? 
Um, but you did say that that would be kind of stripped from the pipes in a, in a high flow situation, such as a fire it or do, whatever. It, it no, no. does no, the, the, not uh, the poly. No, no. Okay, but you did. That's say more a chemical reaction that stays in the pipe itself. That's the purpose of the any corrosion inhibitor, which is this is mm -hmm. it, is going to stick to the pipe to prevent the pipe from corroding. Mm -hmm. So it's not like. You put high velocity and it washes out. It did you happen. say that the high velocity would cause the turbination to occur at, from time to time? That it would still oh. pull things it from may, the pipe? Yeah, it may. I, it I, that's why I heard it that it was. <coughs> tuberculation, sorry. Yeah, so with the film itself. that you're putting in the inside of the pipe, you're, you're continuously feeding that chemical to treat the film. So even if it was to be removed, you, you, you're, you're continuously it. feeding that chemical. Okay. So you can continuously putting the line lining on the inside of the pipe. And what is the cost of that? Cost of what? Putting the chemical into the system. You're talking um, to the microphone, Mike. If you want to use that one or one where Mr. Koch is or go to Mr. Uh, I, I can answer that. So you, you I just want you answer that. So for the chemical feed pumps, uh, is not a lot. It's around twelve thousand dollars for the equipment. Not including the installation, but then there is an associated cost monthly for your chemical feed. So the tanks and the pumps are not real expensive. The dosage mm -hmm. is very small mm -hmm. that we're looking at, so it's not a huge expense in that in that matter. Yeah. The installation is going to be the most significant uh, expense that you're going to see. And you have to ramp it up to, you know. Once you have the right doses that we are calculated based on the capacity of the plant and the operation of the plant, because you can operate, pretty much you have one flow. Is, is the plant is off or 700 gallons per minute, mm -hmm. one well. Right. So there is not a lot of changes into that. Once you have the flow, you have your chemical feed. Okay. It's, there is what, no. And what about the different inputs to the system from East Brunswick or the wells or the That's a complete, pipe? complete different story. <laughs> complete different story. This is the water produced by the borough. Okay. The water that we're getting from East Brunswick is different characteristics, different treatment process, sure. different everything. We cannot put a treatment plan in every entry so location of the system. Will those areas that are served by those inputs? get the film necessary? Um, according to the hydraulic model, there is an area of influence that is pretty much only being fed by the East Bronx, East Bronx system, uh, which is the going to be the west by the entrance and then the north side of town where you see that feed. Uh, depending on how much we're going to use, we're going to see it when the treatment plant is off. There is a line that goes there to the tank, and then from the tank it distributes out until you get to the lower section of the tank where the Which pumps tank? are. Which tank? The standpipe or the uh, Appleby tank? Appleby tank. Okay. Yes. So you're going to see that water in big, big, large section of the system if the plant is not in operation and you're just being fed by the two interconnects on the tank. You're going to see the water. Uh, there are certain areas that only see treatment water plant but it's going to be a combination of both that's right. but you just said the west and the north sections yeah might the, not the, receive the, the entry same amount. the entry points right. from the east brunswick connections are going to be directly impacted by that water quality okay um but we do use that so how do you get the polyphosphate to those areas on a regular basis if we're using the east brunswick water and it's coming in from there and our treatment water is not getting into there you would have to shut down the system that allows that water in to be only fed by the treatment plant water that is treated. Which is possible. We, 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 can, is, have, it, we it, can pump enough from the groundwater from the treatment plant mm -hmm. in order to, um, if we had to, completely shut down the interconnections. But we would still be paying East Brunswick for nothing at that point. That's correct, yes. Um, the well water, uh, South River's well water, has been historically high in iron. Correct. Okay, so again, you're pumping more iron into the system the more you use the well water. <laughs> the same iron, this concentration is pretty much the same, and the filters are designed for that. Okay. That's what it's taking your iron and manganese 
mainly that's that's why you're filtering the water right. so the, so the, in other words there's no high iron content coming out of the treatment plant going into the pipes no i don't i don't that's why you have the filters okay you need to get the plant in the better operation so you can backwash efficiently and treat water efficiently and use the water uh, from the ground storage tank more often and mm -hmm. th there are certain things that uh, Mike is working on, on on things to improve the operation Still of the plant. Yes. yes. Okay. So um, the overall plan then, um, the pipes are still old. The pipes are till, still too small in many areas, correct? You were talking about two inch and four no. inch. And they four inch and six be, inch. And four, they, and six four and six. And they can't be actually, um, say, lined simply. There were failures in your There are plan. considerations to do and studies to establish four inch should be replaced six inch we can take a look at alternatives so what is the plan for replacing pipes since they can't be actually relined cleaned and relined well that's a, that's a type of evaluation that has to be done and you have to do a cost evaluation on on the replacement of the pipes that, that the, the cost evaluation was not with this hydraulic model did not do a cost evaluation of replacement replacing uh, four inch lines. Are, you are, have to actually do that evaluation. Are you talking about the process itself? Not or? the process, no, the plan to get it done. Obviously the permanent solution is to get the uh, tuberculation out of the pipes, to, to open up the pipes, to get all of that, uh, you know, 100 years of oh, when, corrosion. What we out. usually do is we look at the funding mechanisms, mm -hmm. right? There is- um, Funding mechanisms, yes. you said? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, for a system of this nature, and for the type of problem that we're facing, mm -hmm. uh, there are leadways. That's why DEP is supporting the temporary permit to facilitate the process in getting into a permanent solution. There's Environmental uh, New Jersey Infrastructure Bank. Mm -hmm. They f loan money. Mm -hmm. They sometimes give grants and all that should be mm -hmm. in incorporated in the study to say, okay, we're going to replace this. We need to go find money and there are entities that are giving low interest loans or grants depending on the needs of the system. So technically your study here is for like a, a quicker and temporary solution to Correct. the problem. That, that's Mike's. That's my point. That's his plan. Yeah. We're not looking right now into that, That's this. Mike's point. That's not your Yeah, that was point. my point. It's not a, a permanent solution, but it, but you have to evaluate it. Right. Long term. But your point is different or? No, it's the same. I just. Okay. Gotcha. I'm working through Mike. Okay. So I noticed there seemed to be a bit of disagreement between Bruce and you with some of the technicalities mm -hmm. of the water flow. Uh, you weren't aware of some of the situations of the underground piping or whatever. Did you not work with the borough engineer on this plan? Or? We got the hydraulic model information from Bruce's office. Okay. So then why wouldn't they have known about some of the things? You got what from us? The whole hydraulic information from your office, from the CAD drawings that were prepared. And we just gave you a map. Uh, we got CAD information on connections, valves, piping. Basically the map, but we did not do any hydraulic analysis. Correct. That's yeah, they, what they, I did. They did not. So I connected that, recreated it, put it in a hydraulic model, check with operations with the water system on how things were connected, how they used it, where were the operation considerations, what was the height of the tank when it turned on and off, and so on. Interconnects with this bronze, we press operating pressures, and so on. So it, it, it was, we did work at some point together with the baseline of the topologic configuration of the system. Okay. Now, again, there was a discussion of the valves and pressure regulating valves, I assume it's PRV or whatever. Um, there's also discussion about replacing some other valves that are so old that if well, you we, would we open them or close we them, agree in a break. couple of things. We agreed in the four inch lines that, uh, that should be replaced. Mm -hmm. We have different uh, understandings on how to replace or fix or rehabilitate six inch lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all in the same line. We want to give the best option for the borough to fix the problem. There are cost implications for it. Yes. Replacing, rehabilitation, different entities, but I'm pretty sure that after the facts are all determined, mm -hmm. 
we can come to an agreement on what is the best alternative for the town in terms of how to fix the six inch pipes. Now, in a previous conversation, just a month or two ago, maybe three months ago, you had mentioned about these uh, pipes that need to be, or uh, valves that need to be closed once a year and reopened once a year as a test, and that information has to go, uh, I don't know, to the DEP or yeah, something. Yeah, under like the that. Water Quality Accountability Act, certain size valves have to, have to be exercised annually. And do we have the records of that being done and that, sent to that the That has been done and sent to the DEP. And sent to the DEP. It year. has been done, yeah. Okay. Every year it's required once a year. But those, those valves work. There's no problem with them. The, those valves are working properly. Okay. Those are larger valves. Uh, so I understand yeah. that. Yeah, but they are working. They they Correct. are turned. Um, it was something I heard. There are motors available because sometimes it takes like what three hundred turns to. I, I believe to turn one of those. I know valves. that was brought up at the last meeting uh, to get a valve exercising system. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if if the borough, you know, went ahead gotcha. and purchased that. I, I don't know that answer. Okay. I know it was looked into. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where we're at with, with actually purchasing it. Gotcha. Okay. When we're doing that, we like to count the turns. Because mm -hmm. then you can we, damage the system, yeah, the, you, correct. the gearbox. Yeah. So it, either you get that with a counter that knows the exact amount <coughs> of spins. But yeah, I, I, again, the, uh, guns are the number 300 came up during the conversation. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was... Yeah, right. The, the, they're big valves. Big. Yeah, it's extremely challenging. So they have systems that, that do the valve turning for you. Gotcha. But, but they're ex expensive oh, sure. pieces of equipment. Yeah. They have to be purchased. Gotcha. And, and you do, at the time, you did not have that equipment. Gotcha. Okay. But they are working. The reports have been submitted. Correct. They, those, those, yeah, they're, they're, they're in compliance. Has there been any outside testing of those valves from uh, an entity not employed by the borough? No, it's everybody by the borough. Okay. And you haven't? I tested. haven't personally. It was uh, your company, Agra. No, we, we we didn't do the valve exercising program. The the water department staff and DPW did. Okay, uh, Mayor, I was looking at the minutes of a meeting in February of 2019 where this was supposed to be addressed. Uh, the water operator at the time had mentioned that most of the um, problems um, in the system for brown water for uh, were along Whitehead and north of the tracks. Is that what we're still seeing? That's the no report idea. that was given in the minutes of February 2019. Yeah, I just, maybe I missed that Me, I don't remember. No, you were there. I was there? Okay. Yes. You actually mentioned that you were giving a report uh -huh. that you had of the areas where there was brown water to the water department to be researched. It's in the minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you do that or do they have that report? Mr. Hauserman, 2019, come on. Yes, it's in the minutes. You it's did fine. it. Fine. Fine. Okay. I'm just saying that since then, it doesn't seem like anything's been done. Now, I believe Mr. Gindy is the chairman of the Utilities Committee. Mm -hmm. Have there been meetings to discuss some of these problems? Will there be a meeting to discuss these problems? That you'll have to take up with Mr. Gindy. Okay. You know what? He's right here. Do you think he would have an opinion on that? I don't know, Mr. Hausman. <laughs> but before you begin, is there anyone else who has any questions for these gentlemen? Okay. You're now on the timer. Why is that? Because uh, we are going on uh, into the general public. Okay. But you're just going to cut me off or I can still speak? Nope, you've got 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yindi, do you had, think? We have had meetings with the Department of Public Works. We have never spoken about the water or the uh, electrical when it came down to the, like the, the details of it. But we've always spoken about the workabouts of how gotcha. the Department of Public Works. Are there minutes from those committee meetings or? No. No. Okay. But have you given reports? I have reports, yes. Did you give them? I believe you were telling Councilwoman Mera a couple of months, meetings ago that you gave a report. At one yeah, of these I gave meetings. a report at the meeting. Okay. I told them what, I, what we sat down, we spoke about, and I gave the report. It was during my minutes. It didn't make it into any of the minutes of the meetings. I don't know why, but I know okay. I, for a fact I spoke about it. Because you would think that at the next meeting when you approve those minutes, you would have mentioned something about how come my report didn't get in. Well, I know for a fact it was said. Okay. Who are the members of that committee? Um, myself, Jim Krasinski, and I believe uh, Mr. Seal. Mr. Seal, okay. Any memories of the meetings or they what you discussed? Or? Okay. But you don't have, Mr. Seal says he doesn't have a memory. But what... <clears throat> You never talked about the water, I guess, or the problems or the money that we have to spend to re replace the pipes or clean the pipes or anything? 
Well, inevitably, you know that a lot of the pipes are smaller. You have a lot more usage out of the pipes, especially the four inch pipes and everything too. And, you know, like you said, you don't, he said that the uh, age of the pipes, he has no, there's a lot of the pipe, there's concrete roads. And I know that they were done in 1950s. So you got to take and assume these pipes are at least 70 years old, sure. if not more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, the treatment processes and everything that we're going to be doing right now too, it's not the end result, but it is what we can do for the meantime to alleviate some of the problems. Inevitably, like you said, replacement is the only option, really. Put larger size pipes in. The four inch, like you said, as you increase the velocity, you increase the turbidity and the water and everything like that, too. You see by the one model that he has there, too, the one particular section that is in the north end, too, that has the most complaints about the brown water, too. But that's the section with the smallest amount of pipes. So you got to stop and figure you also have the way the, the flushing is done, too. You did have stagnation in the water, too. Mm -hmm. There were people that had said that they have a foul odor on it, and that's the stagnation because mm -hmm. the water sits in the pipes. It wasn't thoroughly rinsed through. And then, of course, if you change the flow in a direction, you're just going to agitate all of that turbulation again and introduce it right back into the system. So, you know, it's we're doing what we can do right now. It's, you know, it's... It's a long-term project, it really is, because you got to stop and consider. Look at the amount of piping that is in this town, mm -hmm. and the cost incurred in it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Bruce gave an estimate. What was it? Was two, three hundred dollars a foot? Um, about one hundred and fifty the last. One hundred and fifty a foot. Consider sixty on diameter. Sixty plus because. miles. Mm -hmm. That's from here to let's say Reading, Pennsylvania. Stop mm -hmm. and consider that. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a lot of digging. These discussions that you had at the um, committee meetings, you said right. you didn't actually talk about any of that, though. Well, like I said, that expertise is actually up to the, the water operator and the guys in the water department. They know the exact locations. I know that there's over 400 some odd hydrants in the town. Mm -hmm. And like you say, to coordinate them in different sections like that to, to get the flow in one direction and then reverse it mm -hmm. to release and dispel some of that turbidity, that would be up to them and their mapping and everything like that too. And the, you know, the frequency. Up to the DPW employees, you're yes. saying. You know, like I said, they did it in sections in the town. They did the north, e the north end, then the south end, and then the center section. And they gave a specific time frame for the people to be aware that, hey, we're going to be flushing in the morning, run the bathtub, flush the commode a few times before you turn on the water and everything and turn your coffee maker on because it'll be coffee before it hits the grinds. But that's not a solution, and that's been going on forever. The flushing of the hydrants, it's on the calendar, it's on Nexel, it's on everything. That has nothing really to do with what we're talking about repairing the system. I understand yeah. these are the things that, you know, are going on now, sure. but... <laughs> but the utilities committee, I would have thought, would have been working on this since 2019, but I guess you really haven't. The mayor, in 2019, it's in the minutes, it's what he said. He said, slowly but surely, we'll be getting this done. What is slowly, Mayor Krenzel, if I can disturb you? What is slowly but surely? It's been five, four or five years now, and nothing's been done. Do we have an estimate of when this may Start at least just it's start. already begun, Mr. Houseman. Hmm? It's already begun. The it's treatment already plant, begun. yes, the treatment plant has been worked on. Right, that doesn't help the so, the rust in the pipes. Go ahead. It is. We are looking at it, studying as to what needs to be done, and then how we're going to do it. I, I yep, completely agree with you on that. You're mm -hmm. looking at it and you're studying it and you're trying to figure out what to do. Yes. Okay, but because it's been four and a half years since you made the statement that. Yep. It was going to be done. And it's now being done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward and speak on any other matters concerning the public? Joe Donato again. Um, two, two matters I want to go through um, that involve the town and the county. The first one was the... Uh, Crosswalks on Whitehead Avenue and River Road. You said that uh, my last report was that uh, it was everything was fixed at the uh, the end on River Road okay. that crossing. How about the um, the clearing of the vegetation? I passed there on Saturday. We're done. As far as I know, the homeowner, under direction from East Brunswick, 
clear the bushes. So it looked better so than the, when it was the so, last time. So the traffic coming down can see that light. Well, East Brunswick Police were taking care of that. No, no, I, I'm saying I you, haven't gotten you, a report from East Brunswick Police, but it appeared to me that there have been some. All right, I, I'll have to go back and do it again. I was by there uh, yesterday, and I could not see the. I same. haven't heard anything from East Brunswick. It looked like there was trim. It could have been from all this rain that it was pushed down. I don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it, everything they've got is is over the uh, over the top. East Brunswick um, Special Operations were handling that. Oh, they 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 were the ones that were doing it. Or? East, they were notifying the homeowner. Okay, I, I looked at it and it's not weeds are on for it's, private property. Yeah, they're weeds. Yeah, but I'm talking about the vegetation that's blocking the right uh, from that's, private that's property. That's more than weeds. That's no, that's actually. It's, uh, what was in, in the design parameters of the, that facility? I imagine when you design a facility, and if I'm wrong, please uh, you know correct me. That when, one of the design con considerations is in order for it to function properly, you've got to be able to see it. I've turned it over to East Brunswick; they are handling it. <coughs> but they haven't reported to us. They have not reported back yet. No. Okay, so uh, I'm going to reach out to them tomorrow and find out uh, what's going on because I'm asked questions and I'm coming here asking you the questions and I'm not getting the answers I need to report. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, well, it seems the problem is, is that that one place, that one sign is in East Brunswick. Understood. And we have no understood, jurisdiction. But it's, but it's your facility that the town, in, co in coordination with East Brunswick, Mm -hmm. Came to the determination the Brunswick was going to allow you to, to build in their in their community, but the maintenance and everything else that goes along with it is the responsibility of South River. Mm, so that's why I'm no, assuming since it's your design, since it's South River's design, I don't mean yours. I mean South River's yeah. design that you need to keep that area clear so people can see it because it could be it could the light could be working perfectly, but if you can't see it, that's it's true. Not functioning properly. That's true, but it's, I believe it seems to be a matter of jurisdiction. I don't think South River can just send over its DPW to clear vegetation. There's ways to do it. There's ways to do it, but I'm not yeah. in the position to tell the borough what, 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 what might be uh, the best way to do it. Um, well, you go right ahead if you have an idea. Mm. Well, if it, let me ask you this. We have uh, utility lines throughout the whole community. And those utility lines are go from pole to pole in front of people's homes. Some people have trees out there. Trees will grow up into the wires. Are the property owners responsible for clearing that uh, out so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the electricity? With the power lines? No, the town does that. Mm -hmm. okay. Similar situation here, except there's no overhead power lines. There's a site distance for the, that uh, facility. So what I'm asking is, how is that going to be handled? Give, giving it to the giving it to the property owner is not fair, in my opinion, because when I was out there looking at it, it overhangs to, to clear out what you need to clear out. Overhangs the road. It's not interfering with traffic, but it's interfering with sight distance. If the property goes out, the property owner goes out there and cuts them down, it's going to fall into the road. Somebody might get hurt. And I know if I were the property owner, I wouldn't be climbing up those trees trying to trying to cut it down. I'd have to hire somebody to do it, to clear an area that no one has contracted with me, got an agreement with me that uh, it would be uh, my responsibility to do that. This is something the town went out and did. They thought it important enough to get the county's approval to do it on the county road. So that's why I'm confused. I don't know why the town isn't taking a positive step to speak to the property owner. Let the town, let East Brunswick know. But East Brunswick already told the town it's up to South River to take care of it. Yes, but it was just stated that East Brunswick went and talked to the person. But you were about to say you had an idea as to what to do, how to approach this. Well, we can talk about that privately. I'm not going to do it publicly because it's, okay. not my, it's not my position to tell you what to do. It just seems to me I have ideas that I don't know why it's not obvious. But in any case, all right, that being said, uh, second is the uh, Main Street. Um, I sent an uh, advisement to 
Mr. Landeski on because uh, they put signs up that says we're going to mill and pave. And of course, that was a mistake. The schedule, the, the, it was scheduled, rescheduled, and it was rescheduled again. And somewhere some other communication got crossed. And when I discovered that within two, three days, that was already taken care of and um, signs were taken down. Correct? On our signs. <laughs> well, you yeah. drive on the main into the streets and you see the they're signs not, still there. But they're not our signs. Yeah. They're no. the county signs. That's right. And the county took them down. I just wanted right. to know yes. have you noticed yeah. that they were gone. No. Huh. Um, and and, and, and as, to, as to the question you asked me, um, I have the police chief here and the DPW director here. How many times do we tell the county, why are you paving something that you're going to be taking up for the trolley tracks? With numerous. Oh, not me. I'm sorry. No, I'm clear. You're the water guy. Oh, you're the water guy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I correct, Chief? Oh, well, that's what. Oh, sorry. My I'm question, sorry. I thought you were asking. Uh, my question to you, which I sent to you and I never got a response back, was if you could provide that information because if it's a miscommunication, I wanted to straighten it out. And I received nothing, so that's why I'm asking well, tonight. It's not a miscommunication. Well, I did not know. a miscommunication. I didn't know about it, and within two, three days after I found out about it, it was taken care of. At one point, I told your engineering department it would be nice if. The special projects department walked down to your office and talked to your department. Yeah, the trolley track thing, they knew nothing about the paving of Main Street. <laughs> like, like, again, well, like said, that either way, a, that it's thankfully it's been uh, resolved because I'd hate to have, have it paved and then ripped up again. So, okay. And Anything else, sir? Where, where, where the confusion was because your statement to me was like. Well, there was no confusion. <laughs> There was no confusion. When they gave us the list of the streets they were going to pave this year, we immediately said to the county, who, to, who in the county? Age, you spoke to the county inspector, correct? When we got the list of where they were going to pave, I asked you to speak to the county inspector and say, why are you paving something that you're planning to rip up? Who was the inspector you spoke to? Gosh. Okay, I'll take care of that. No problem. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Anything else, sir? That's it? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? First call? Come. Come, Richard. Um, all right, Richard Brown, 11 Bits at Place. Uh, first, as the Environmental Commission Chair, um, we had our two trees planted at 812 Washington Street. So, in, first time in my involvement in this. Shade Tree Commission, we've actually planted trees, so <laughs> proud of that. Um, thanks to Bill Neary of Keep Middlesex Moving, we're getting a supply of these uh, traffic and pedestrian safe, safety signs, uh, timely given our uh, fatality recently, and even today I understand there was a, a, a pedestrian collision. Um, so we're going to plaster the town with these and uh, hand them out to residents and hopefully we can raise awareness about the proper way to drive and also for the pedestrians need to be aware in our little town here with 25 mile an hour speed limits and you know so hopefully uh, we can get some good out of that um, on October 14th um, thanks to Dorian Kerber who arranged for Rutgers to supply us to do the rain garden at the high school. Um, we're going to do uh, mostly high school volunteers uh, to install a rain garden at the end of the school uh, high school. And uh, uh, we could use a handful of adult volunteers as well. Um, OK, so that's the official stuff. Now, this is me speaking on my own behalf. So I saw that um, we got the $75,000 for Daly's Park. And uh, I had occasion to read the state budget before. So I wanted to find it in the state budget and see where it was coming from. So apparently this is um, what's called a direct appropriation, which uh, the State House press derisively calls Christmas tree items. Uh, the Federal Congress would call them earmarks. But what it is is pork barrel spending. 
uh, amounts appropriated by individual legislators, <clears throat> approved by the party bosses, so they can go to their constituents and say, I'm bringing home the bacon. <laughs> so the names of the of who requested all these monies is public record, but the Democratic majorities don't seem to want to release the names until the end of the fiscal year. So we won't get the actual list <laughs> until next year sometime. I can guess who it was. But uh, so we're getting $75,000 for Daly's Park. What were they thinking? I mean, if you put your finger on the pulse of South River, the number one issue is not going to be Daly's Pond. It's going to be, what was the whole presentation here about? Water infrastructure. So somebody who has absolutely no understanding of South River is appropriating money for the park when, what do we need money for? Um, I, you know, I've seen um, Stanley and Karabinchak here twice, both times at the, the Democrats picnic at the Philo Lodge. Uh, sorry, I couldn't make it this year. Um, I've <laughs> never seen Degnan here. Oh, well, yeah. I've seen him twice, though. But, um, and I've never seen Bonnie Watson Coleman here in South River either. I, she used to work in my office 20 years ago. Um, but so, you know, oh, it's only $75,000. I can hear, like, what could you do with $75,000 for water infrastructure? Well, one of the things is, don't we have like 20-something lead service lines that need to be replaced? Hey, we could put it towards that. Or one of my ideas would be, you know, you get reports of people complaining about uh, discolored water. And that's all, you probably indicated some of these on, on the map there, right? Well, the complaints may not be representative. My idea, and... $75,000 more than pay for this is do a canvas of all of the 5,600 or so residences, households in South River and ask them, do you have problems? When is the problem? Is it all the time? Is it case? We would, we would have data for the entire town, which we could do with a study with the small amount of money. Um, okay, well... If I could ask, that 75000 is it only, because this was a question, is it only, I mean, because as far as I know, isn't the park basically finished? Yeah, we haven't just, okay. to reimburse ourselves and do additional work. Okay. So, uh, so like, saying it was applied for is kind of misleading, because direct appropriations are given out and put in the budget at the pleasure of the legislator requesting them. They can ask for whatever they want outside of booze and hookers. Uh, uh, it's, there's not, it's not a program. There are no requirements. There's no regulations. There's no application forms. It's a ticket. Ticket has four items written on it. A resolution number, a dollar amount, a one-line description of what the appropriation is for, and the name of the legislator requesting it. That's it. That's the paperwork on it. And then the party bosses either put them in the budget or say no. Uh, in the past five years, 96% of the Christmas tree items have gone to districts controlled by Democrats. And 4% have gone to district control. Hmm. All right. But so, and then let's look at the $75,000 amount that we got from uh, legislators. Um, there's a message in that amount. It's like leaving a 75 cent tip on a hundred dollar check. Um, there are lean and fat years with the Christmas tree items. <coughs> but this year, <clears throat> business is a booming like never before. More than $350 million was appropriated through individual legislators' requests. Um, so compare our $75,000 to what Team 18 got the rest of District 18. East Brunswick, they got a million dollars for their community center capital improvement. How come we didn't get money to improve our cap, uh, community arts center? Oh, we don't have a community arts center. 
Interestingly, they also got a million dollars in fiscal year 2022 to expand their community arts center. Two expansions while our residents are drinking discolored water. Um, Highland Park, they got $330,000 for community center capital improvements. Again, we, we don't have a community center, so I guess we don't deserve that kind of money. Uh, Metuchen. Metuchen is the king of pork in, in District 18 this year. They're getting a total of $5.25 million. $250,000 for a pocket park development. We have one of those, so I guess we're ahead on that one. Um, they're getting $2 million for an emergency services building. All right, that sounds like a, a worthy thing to put it for. But they're also getting $3 million for the design and development of an arts district. Ooh, trendy artist lofts and brew pubs. I can't wait to go to Metuchen and enjoy that stuff. Yeah, again, well, geez, uh, up, their budget is $5 million more than us already, and we're hurting for money on some stuff. Um, South Plainfield got a million dollars for a police fueling station. Now, <laughs> they, they haven't lost their minds sending a million dollars to a Republican-controlled town. Senator Dagnan himself lives in South Plainfield, and I assume that he's plugged in at least in his own community, so that's how he got it there. But I left the best for last, the, the most egregious use of state funds. So Edison Township is getting $2 million for their municipal broadband service. They're, they're going to wire the town with fiber optic and sell internet access to residents and businesses, trying to put Comcast and uh, Optimum out of business. And it's going to make money. It's going to make a lot of money, a couple of million dollars a year. And all of that is spendable outside the cap. Because so, you know, they're going to pad their budget. <coughs> they're not going to reduce property taxes. I can assure you that. But so <laughs> the state is giving Edison $2 million to make money when we could, <clears throat> how many feet of pipe could we replace with $2 million when there's a real need for it? Um, they could give us $2 million to set up our own municipal broadband. We could sell it and then dedicate, by ordinance, the profits to water infrastructure. That that probably even be a better idea. But so, you know, you do the math. South River has 7% of the 18th district population, and we got 0.78% of the pork spending. And I, I, there's, outside of District 18, there's a couple of real doozies here. Well, if Broadway you, if you could just finish up there because got really five hundred thousand dollars for a dog park. I remember there being a thing about the dog park, and the, the best part, Milltown got one million, and Highbridge got four million for water line replacement. I, you know, I, I, I think our legislators are underperforming for the residents of South River. And I just will point out that there's a candidate on the ballot from South River running for assembly this year. So, uh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> Emily Grasso, 13 Darrow Street, um, on the Environmental Shade Tree Commission. I will be quick on the lighter side. So on October, this is an old flyer, but on October 14th and 15th, we are going to have a free cycling event in South River. What is free cycling? Free cycling is where, you know that stuff in your house that isn't even good enough for a garage sale that nobody would buy? With free cycling, you can just put it out on a table and people will come and just take it away for nothing. So, so the rules are you can't charge anything for the things that you put out. Um, you have to dispose of anything left over. You can't resell it. Like if you go and get stuff, you can't take it and resell it. Um, there has to be, um, parking can't be a problem for people coming to take your free stuff. Um, and that's about it. So look for information on the borough website, please. Probably sometime next week. There'll be a link and you can fill out the information, your address, your name. And prior to the event, a map will be generated for the people who want to come get your free stuff. And um, 
that's about all there is to it. So it keeps a lot of things out of landfills and um, <laughs> you get rid of stuff. I did it <laughs> this in May of last year. I can't believe some of the stuff that people took away from my house. <laughs> so um, give it a try. That's what I have for today. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I will be very short. Take your time. Sabbath or Cuchillo, 104 Obridge Turnpike. One thing, if you don't go to the county or apply for stuff, the town's not going to get anything. Two, 2019, you know nothing about the water. That's a known fact, but it was found. Why wasn't you guys prepared when we all heard about the infrastructure bill being passed to get a plan together to get money? That's a simple question. You guys knew about it? Now something's happening, apparently. All that money was, you know, came from the infrastructure bill was over billions of dollars or trillions, whatever it was. Common said here was, we're not going to get anything. It's going to go to Camden and Newark. You got to get that mentality off of that. You have to apply. You have to reach out to the county. You have to reach out to the state. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else? First call, second call, third call. Make a motion to close. Motion second. by Mr. Seal, seconded <laughs> by Mr. Gruchensky. All in favor? Aye. Against, the ayes have it. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you very much. Moving on to the agenda, no mayoral appointments, consent resolutions. Madam Clerk. Whereas Resolution 2023-01 authorizes the Borough Council to utilize a consent agenda to adopt various resolutions of a routine and non-controversial nature at one time. Now, therefore, be it and is hereby resolved that the below listed resolutions are hereby adopted by the Borough Council in whole as if the same were individually acted upon. Consent resolutions 2023-275 to 2023-280. 275, authorize the requisition of funds for payment to the custodian of school monies. 276, property tax refund. 277, authorize certain utility refunds. 278, approval of a special events permit to the Portuguese Club to be held on September 16, 2023. 279, authorizing the appointment of a recreation department employee. 280, authorize the bills and claims list. Motion to pass the consent resolution. Second. Your pleasure. Thank you. Uh, motion has been made by Mr. Gindy, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. Roll call. Councilman Ballas. Councilman Gindy. Uh, yes, uh, with uh, an abstention to 280. Uh, 2301320. Councilman Kurchensky? Yes. Councilman Mira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes, on 280 to abstain from 22 22-03-001, 22-03-054, 23-01320, 23-02350, 2302520 and 23-02241. Resolutions have been adopted. Uh, there's no new business. We will now have our governing body comments, both for the good and welfare and any reports that you may have. We will then go into executive session. There will be no action taken afterwards. We'll simply reconvene and then adjourn until the October 2nd meeting. Uh, Councilman Mayor, all went well at the school, it was school night. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I was late this evening because I had back to school night. Kids are back in school. Um, I want to mention a few things. My next board of, meeting, board of Ed meeting isn't until the 21st, but I do want to mention that homecoming will be September 23rd. Uh, a lot of fall sports are starting now. Um, I do want to mention today, I know Mr. Byrne, you mentioned that there was an incident with the pedestrian this morning. Uh, I said it at our last meeting, how I was dreading my daughter walking to school because she's a middle schooler and wants to walk now. And uh, this morning, she almost got hit by a car. Um, 12 years old, I make sure I take her outside. I live on a busy road, I know, and I watch her cross the street. This morning, one of the sides of the street stopped for a pedestrian to cross the street at the crosswalk, but unfortunately, my daughter 
did not look to the other side as a car was speeding down Main Street. And thank God nothing happened to her. He tried to stop. Luckily, my daughter stopped, and then he kept on <coughs> going. So it is very dangerous to be walking to school on Main Street, at least. I want to, you know, give me 30 of those signs so I can post on Main Street because I have my heart in my hands at 7 o'clock every morning because my daughter wants to be responsible and walk to school. So I, I think keep Middlesex moving, and I hopefully we can educate both pedestrians and drivers and everyone out there to be more aware of their surroundings, you know. I purposely go outside every morning to watch her cross that street because I know how dangerous it is, and... For that to happen to me this morning, let me tell you, it took me all day to kind of relax from that. So um, mm -hmm. speeding in the morning is a very big problem on Main Street. I know a lot of kids cross in that area to wait for school buses for other schools and to walk to school. So I hope that we can maybe watch that a little closer, in, especially in the morning when everybody's in a rush to go home, to work. Um, what else? Oh, with schools, I do want to mention with the kids. I know I've got my kids, and this week it's been back to school week every day and um, getting kids more situated. But the middle school, I would say, is a little more tougher with these kids. And uh, social media is really the new way of bullying kids. Uh, I just ask parents to please be more vigilant with their kids on social media. There's TikTok trends that are awful, uh, going from damaging school properties to, um, you know, bashing other students online and saying horrible things about them. Uh, I know my daughter showed me an incident of something that happened at middle school with TikTok. So just be more vigilant on social media uh, because kids hide a lot of things and kids are really mean. Imagine, you all remember how school was? Imagine it on social media where Tons of people can look at these horrible things that people say. And uh, there was a post on TikTok that had over a thousand views of these just horrible things about kids in school. So please, parents, be a little more vigilant on um, your kids' social media. It's, it's not hovering, but it's just more of educating them on how to be. I mean, we, we see online, even adults do it sometimes. So. Please just uh, educate your kids a little more. Uh, the library, I don't have uh, much because our meeting is at the end of the month, but I just want to remind people that the library is a good source of internet usage. They also have hotspots that you can uh, take home and use if you don't have internet, um, since school is starting and kids need more of that lately. And they're open on Saturdays now. I know they stopped during the summer of uh, being open on Saturdays, but now they back with uh, Saturdays. Uh, the Environmental Commission, I, we mentioned the planting of the trees and the process of the rain garden. I'm unsure if um, you were able to connect with getting uh, supplies for a rain garden day, but I'm sure, Adriano, if we can reach out and maybe see what kind of supplies that we can get for the kids for that day <coughs> um, would be appreciated like gloves and bags and all that. Okay, perfect. Um, I also want to mention that the we had on tonight's agenda the special event for the South River Portuguese Club. They're having a folklore festival this Saturday um, outside. It's uh, They have folklore communities from all over New Jersey, Newark, Kearney, South River. Uh, they're dancers. It's a good way for you guys to see the culture of uh, the Portuguese community, to know that um, they, they make a fun event out of it, and you can see really all the hard work they put into dancing, and it's an event for food. And uh, I was told today to please reach out to the mayor and council and invite you all to the Folklore Festival that will be, I believe they start uh, around 2. You can order uh, chicken or um, sardines i know they cook that a lot in a lot of food 
So if you have nothing to do this Saturday, please stop by the Portuguese Club. Uh, the Portuguese Club is a nonprofit organization, and I do want to mention that uh, this year, like they do in the past several years, they're having their annual golf outing. This is their way of um, raising money for scholarships. They give out four-year scholarships to um, Luso Americans, which is Portuguese American kids. Um, so that's a good way to help uh, them, and they help the community. They really do give back. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, last Sunday, we had the Mexican flag raising for all that couldn't attend. It was raining, but half hour before the event, the sun came out and we had a beautiful parade down from Daly's Pond all the way down to the VFW. Mayor, I know you could not attend, but the Mexican community of South River will be giving you this for the borough of South River. It is something that came from Mexico, showing how the Mayans of Mexico and just a little bit of their told me to give this to you. Good. I will see this at Earl Hall. We will put this out there. Mm -hmm. Various people and nationalities give me gifts and I put them out on the table in Burl Hall so that you could see them. And they also gave some um, things of appreciation to some of the members of the Human Relations Commission that I have to give to them because they had to leave early. But it was a beautiful day and the community came out. Uh, the next flag raising will be September 30th and that's for the Hondurian community. Uh, the last thing I want to mention and Mr. Byrne, you came up with um, the budget from the state. I'm not sure if you were here at the meeting that I announced that we received that money. Uh, it goes back to in March when a constituent of South River had a conversation with our assemblyman, Sterley Stanley, uh, worrying about the fields of our town and how um, our kids were going to continue to practice, whether it be soccer or football, um, and engage in their sports. You know, people are aware that uh, we weren't going to be able to use Denny Stadium and certain events like that. So a constituent brought it up to our assemblyman. I then had a conversation with that constituent and assemblyman Sterley Stanley. And we discussed the project that we already had designed and ready to go for this year. And when he came back, he had said or dedicated an amount and put it in the budget for the state for South River. It was a conversation that was had with residents. I know that water is a super priority for South River. Uh, but our, our families here also worry about their kids and how to, you know, live here forever. And that's how that money came about through the state. Uh, I can't remember the last time anyone went to our district and asked for money, whether in writing, cause, and then I put it in writing and requested for that money. But I can't remember the last time anyone up here <coughs> asked for any money. So yes, the request came directly from me after a resident and our assemblyman had a conversation uh, for Daly's Pond. And that was because we already had a project ready to go to improve that. We had a proposal. We can't ask for money from anyone whether it be federal or state or county, without knowing what we need and how to go about it and having a project ready to go. Nobody's gonna give us anything if we don't have a plan. So I'm glad we got that reimbursement. I know that possibly it could only be used for Daly's Pond now, but we still have a playground that was taken down that hasn't been installed yet. I'm sure it could go to that. 
And I would suggest going forward with our council members that we ask for money. <coughs> and we get a proposal going and we get an idea of how much money we need uh, to be able to move forward with these projects. I was very happy that um, the company of Kleinfeld also mentioned, you know, these projects are large and we're gonna have to ask money from iBank. And, but, but we need a plan, we need to know, we, we, you know, we keep talking about this, we've got the stuff in front of us, but we still have no idea how, how much this is gonna cost. So I'm hoping that now we have this, we have an idea of how much infrastructure really needs to be replaced how much we can fix, hopefully, for a bit longer, but it's here in front of us, and hopefully, before the end of the year, as soon as possible, we start with our infrastructure. Uh, I know it was based on the month that we had that fire. I can tell you, two weeks ago, I had brown water, my, all my whites are damaged, and you know, my, my kid's favorite blankie to take to bed, now I'm gonna have to tie-dye it so that he could still use it because it looks like I haven't washed it in, in years. Uh, you know, and, and if I look at this plan, I've got a very large pipe on my street, so it's not even like I have these four or six inches. It's everywhere. We need to start it, <coughs> hopefully, as soon as possible and get the ball rolling. But um, I'm, I was very happy we got a lot more information from our Agra company and from Kleinfeld, and hopefully we can get something moving. So <coughs> I will end my spiel here with please drive slower, drive safer, be more aware. Um, and I hope everybody can come out to homecoming on September 23rd. Uh, I think I was told, I don't know if it's a rumor or not, but I think I was told that we're going against Spotswood for homecoming. Yes, we are. And we're going against Spotswood for their homecoming in October. So that should be interesting. Well, at least we'll be on the opposite uh, side. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. September is... Suicide Prevention Month, um, I like to mention this every month. I, I lost a dear friend to me from suicide. Um, so it's very important to keep a check on everybody's mental health, uh, especially kids. But I, I will say, you know, I lost a friend who was an adult, so everybody struggles in some way. Just uh, know that and be a little more kinder to people. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gruchensky. Thank you, Mayor. Um, seniors, the Office on Aging, uh, they are closing their thrift store and they would like to thank everyone for the donations that have been made over the time and it's just an end of an era there. Uh, <laughs> the monthly mingle is coming up next week. I don't know if there's any availability yet. You're gonna have to call the Office on Aging to find out if there's any spaces left and they are offering a high dose flu vaccine. Uh, what you have to do is call to set up an appointment with the Office on Aging. Um, with that, that's it for the Office on Aging. Um, I did mention the VFW did get a grant for the community garden, that was a while back. It was this year too. Uh, and also the third week in September is POW MIA Day. It's a uh, day of remembrance it's kind of close to me and everything like that too, but it's uh, one thing to stop and think about it. I know we just got through with the uh, 9-11 ceremony and everything, and I thank all of the people in the township that came out there and came together for that particular event. With that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ciola? Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, just to reiterate, school is open. Please drive extremely cautious. Um, some of the kids I've noticed are on skateboards and scooters and are just flying down the streets. So please obey all our traffic laws, the no parking, the speed limits, and just be fully alert of coming down on these intersections because they are coming down pretty quick and sometimes they're not stopping, they're going right through. I've seen it a couple times already. 
Um, I'd like to thank everybody who attended our 9-11 memorial service. Um, it was a great turnout. Um, 22 years is a long time. And I uh, just want to say, please, never forget. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Pallas? Uh, just a couple of things. I'd like to thank Age for uh, painting the yellow lines that are delineating where you're supposed to park. Now pay attention to them hmm. because they're not. They're still, I know it's difficult to take your kids to school up there, but that's what they're there for, to make it safer for people to park, to park on the right side of the road because what they're doing now is wherever there's a spot, whether you're coming up Fairview or they're just pulling in, doesn't matter which way they're facing. So now the kids are getting out on the side in the street out of the vans. It's just too dangerous. You have to pay attention. All, everybody, the parents, the kids, everyone. So I thank you for that. I, I also attended the uh, uh, Night of Remembrance last night, and I thank everybody for coming out. The weather was fine. The rainbow was beautiful mm -hmm. right at the end. South River Homecoming is the 23rd. I know they are still looking for people with um, convertibles. convertibles to drive. So if you want to get in touch with Chris Matz at the high school, he's looking for that. And I want to congratulate Alyssa on her nuptial. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I wish you many, many years of happiness. Thank you, Donna. That's thank it. You. Thank you. Mr. Gindy. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Zanga, I'm kind of confused over something. I know at the last council meeting we spoke about Daly's Pond. Uh, the equipment did come in. Uh, I know that we were looking for the, I guess the ground, the, the base of it. Where are we with that? conversation today I understand that we were supposed to get something from the county did we ever receive that money no not yet all right so let's just say we do I know I asked this question before let's just say with if, if and when we receive this money and obviously this park most likely may be done by that time is it possible this money could be allocated towards something else most likely it has to be used for daily costs. has to we still have all the work to do we still have a security system we want to put in okay fencing Oh, we still, okay. And it's not county money, it's state money. State money. That's even better for me. No. That's even better. State. All right. So we have actually a, a reached out to the county, though. Oh, yeah. We've okay. Times. All right. Um, on behalf of Councilman Oliveira that could not be here today, his report for the Parks and Rec. Um, as of today, he has 145 total number registered for fall sports. The breakdown was basketball, fundamentals 22, tennis 41, competition cheer 60, and fall baseball 22. Uh, it's remarkable how much uh, the Parks and Rec has actually grown. We have partnered up with the South River Public Library to host Trunk and Treat this year on on Saturday, October 21st, from 3 to 5. Whether it's a rain date, sorry, whether it rains or shines, we're still going to be held there. If it rains, it will be held inside. Uh, the cars will have their own uh, uh, tents where they'll still be giving out uh, their uh, uh, candies. So please come out October 21st, which is at the Republic, South River Public Library. Uh, now on to my uh, report. Um, I had the opportunity during September 10th to do two proclamations, the Mexican uh, um, flag raising, which was a great time, and I also had the 92nd um, Union Baptist Church, uh, I guess you could say anniversary. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good time, very loud, but uh, <laughs> the proclamation went very well. Uh, and then 9-11, um, 22 years ago, uh, South River lost Christopher Dinkoff, along with well over 3,000 people. Uh, this is a day of remembrance. This is a day that we don't forget, and this is a day that you have to remember that 
we stood watching something that was uh, terrific. sad, very, very sad. Um, Masons, uh, the Levels Club, we had to remove, uh, sorry, we had to cancel the car show due to the, uh, the uh, rain. Uh, we are going to be postponing it till the spring and summer of next year. So I will let you know as soon as it gets closer to that. Everybody heard about homecoming, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and thank you for doing the proclamations. Uh, I went off to Kansas, came back, and got sick over the uh, holidays, so I figured just stay out of uh, everybody's way. But to you, Mr. Zanga, and you, Mr. Lindensky, you know, you hear about <coughs> going for grants. Do we apply to the county and the state and the feds for grants? Absolutely. That's what the special assistant who does special projects does. Um, she updates my reports uh, weekly. And um, can you give us a few? Here. Can you give us a few for instances? Sure. We're talking about the grant writer that was just hired, right? Yes, um, we've been speaking to the EPA about water technical assistance program. Received notification on September 6th that we may be eligible for services. A representative from the EPA partner, U.S. Water Alliance, will be in touch soon. Meeting tentatively scheduled for 918. Uh, let's see, the WIFIA program, water infrastructure. Administrated by the EPA DEP, we signed up for funding announcements on 523. It appears that funding goes to New Jersey Drinking Water State Revolving Fund and gets funneled through NJIB. The New Jersey Water Bank we, is run by the New Jersey IB. Application process through H2 loans. Lack of priority to small municipalities that are not classified as disadvantaged. Water projects affect. Well, are, are we considered disadvantaged? Hmm? No. We're not. No. We're not, we're not qualified as disadvantaged. And why is that? And our financial hmm. status is good. From our utilities. Yeah. Um, I can go on. I mean, this is. No, okay. That's pages. you know. And most we, of them, most of them say disadvantaged. So we don't qualify and they get back and say we don't qualify yes because we are pursuing as much as we can the school just got 2.5 million dollars in grants because of the the type of um income that parents have how can how are we not disadvantaged it's it's a different okay 2.5 million dollars the board of ed just got but our government is well run. That's why our government is not disadvantaged. We don't waste money. That's we, the problem. We have spoken with the school. In fact, when we find grants available for the schools, we send them to the schools. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very fortunate. The governor has just the last week decided to give a lot of, I guess it's the leftover ARPA money mm -hmm. um, to the schools. South River got five million for after school programs and now they got another seven seven hundred seven hundred thousand. Because they've had a grant writer, Camilla Mazio, for the last six, seven years, constantly building and improving on every grant they get. It's not just because that they get money. It's because they apply for it and they have somebody very well educated in getting those grants for the schools. Oh, we, we get grants, but we're down the list. Correct. correct. We're down the list. Yes, and you're mentioning they're. you're mentioning something because we just hired somebody that started doing special projects. We can't sit here and say that we've been constantly looking. Yeah, this year. No, we've always been constantly looking. Besides Bruce, you know, and the Office on Aging, and Donna, yes. Us, infrastructure, what's out there federally. Didn't everybody not get an email today from the um, DOT, federal DOT, 
on a uh, seminar that they're going to do on helping towns who struggle in getting a, a letter of intent to start for funding. Did anybody open that up today? I or am I the only one that got it? I don't have it. I got it this afternoon. DOT is constantly sending things that we could, should be looking for and learning on and improving with. I would show you now, but my phone just died. Hmm. I don't want to take up your time, Mr. Mayor. No, 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 no. That's, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. That's, that's you know. <laughs> I, I just smile, but, you know, you, you got your 75000 yes, and the fact that you're running for re-election had nothing to do with it. So, okay. but anyway. Uh, you know, but you did mention something interesting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about speeding. And up here we talk about uh, problems with people, and the people in the audience complain about people putting out garbage too early and not taking care of their homes. All of this has one thing in common. People have to care. You know, we talk about we're putting up four-way stop signs throughout the town. That's great. But if people are going to run right through the stop sign, if people are not going to stop when somebody is walking on a crosswalk in the state of New Jersey, if somebody's in that crosswalk, you know, you're supposed to stop. You know, this is New Jersey. You take your life in your hands if you try to do that. Uh, people have to care. It has to start with the individual. And no law, no government can change that. It's got to start with the individual, with people, people who care about their, their town. That's why it was so nice to see the people who came to the 9-11 memorial, um, even in the rain. It was nice to see them. And I wonder how many of you people know that the South River Fire Department took, uh, our own fire department helped in the aftermath of 9-11. We did, uh, but a lot of people don't even know that. You would if you went there, if you came to the services. Uh, those are good things, a chance to come together in our community. So hopefully everybody had a happy Labor Day, come out for homecoming, again, chance to uh, get together. We're going to go into closed session, effectively ending the meeting, and we'll see you all on October 2nd. Madam Clerk. Resolution 2023-281, whereas Section 8 of Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the general public from a meeting of the governing body under certain circumstances, and whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of South River are of the opinion such circumstances presently exist. Now therefore, be it, it is hereby resolved by the Mayor and the Council of the Borough of South River and the County of Middlesex of the State of New Jersey that the public be excluded upon the here and after specific subject matter and that such subject matter to be so discussed is as follows, contract negotiations. Be it further resolved that such record of the above discussion will be made public when confidentiality is no longer required. Motion to go into closed. Second. Motion by Mr. Gerchensky, seconded by Mr. Gindy. Roll call. Councilman Ballas. Yes. Councilman Gindy. Yes. Councilman Gerchensky. Yes. Councilman Mira. Yes. Council President Siula. Yes. We shall return. On the agenda. Oh. Motion by motion by Mr. Gindy to open, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. Is there anything else to come before us? If not, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Uh, Seola to adjourn, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. All in favor? Aye. All against? The ayes have it. We stand adjourned.